Thanks for joining us as we take a look at, at how to create a file I.O. file layout and how to use the file I.O. program. We're going to cover some of the file I.O. basics for anyone who is new to file I.O. while taking you through an example of implementing it with existing data files. As long as you don't actually change the file layout without continuing to update your older non-file I.O. programs, you can use Filio to save time and increase further maintainability as you continue to develop new programs in business rules. For example, we're going to use a sample customer file, which is available at the SageAX website, entitled Sample Environment. The data we're using is taken from a sample database of VR vendors, but the addresses have been removed and all the phone numbers have been changed. The first thing to do is create a file layout. This process is very simple. As simple, in fact, is creating a text file and typing your file layout into it. Because many of you already have your file layouts in text files, you may be able to just copy and paste them into File.io layouts, making the modifications where necessary. But if not, it's still fairly simple to type them in. In this example, we're using the customer data file, uh, which was provided in the samples, and I'm going to tell you what to put in the file layout, so simply browse or create a folder inside your application called file a and create a new text file. Open that file in your favorite text editor and you're ready to begin. A file layout, file layout consists of a header and detail section. The header describes the file name and path, the version number, any key files, and record length, while the detail section lists all the fields in the data file and their field types. Let's take a look at the header section first. We'll start with customer dot dat, which is the file name, a comma, and cu underscore, which is a unique prefix associated with this file, and the version number, which is zero since we're starting new. And then we have one key called customer dot key, which will be a key file, and code, which is the field name for the customer code number in our data file which will be the key for the key file. Next, we have a record length of 127. And if you don't know what the record length is, you can just leave it blank. And then we separate the header from the rest of the file layout with a bunch of equal signs. The equal signs aren't required, and you could just leave a blank space there, but it does make it easier to look at. Just to review, the first line has three elements, the file name and path, and the unique prefix associated with the file, and then the version of the file. Filio will automatically update your data file if this version number is higher than the current version of the file. If you don't want Filio to update your data file, then set the version of, in the file layout to the correct version matching the one on the disk. It's easy to tell what version your data file is. Simply run one of your programs that opens the file and pause the program with the file open. Then type status files at the prompt and it will tell you the information you need to make your file layout header. Now that we've gone over all the parts of the header, let's take a look at the detail section of the file layout. Each line of the detail section contains three parts which describe one field of your data file. The first one is the name of the field, and this is the same name that's used to describe the keys above. This name is also used in code whenever you want to reference this field in the data file. The second element is a short description of the field, in this case, customer code. This could be a description that you would show to the end user on a screen for maintaining this field. The third element is the form spec of the field on the disk. In this case, it's C for characters and 4, because it's going to be 4 characters long. Uh, let's continue to fill in the rest of the items for this file layout. If you want, you can just copy and paste from the SageAX tutorial and clean it up a little bit. While the spacing doesn't necessarily matter, it does make your file layout easier to read if you ever have to come back to it. Something else to keep in mind is remember each comma in between the three columns of your detail section 
And always remember that a dollar sign is required on non-numeric field names, while numeric field names do not require a dollar sign. Always remember to save your file layouts. In this case, I'm saving mine as customer. And remember not to use any extension. And save it into the file lay folder. A file layout will be saved as a CSV file. So to review, we have the field name, comma, field description, comma, field type, and field length. Next, open the command console of business rules. Make sure that you've saved your sample data in the same folder as your business rules copy. And to test the file layout, we're going to run Filio and use the data crawl crawler to look at our sample data. And you should see your file layout, entitled file layout, in the list. And by clicking view, you'll see your data file information in a list view. Here you can see the information in the data file. We've got the customer code, which is a four-digit number, to the customer name, these are all BR vendors, and the city, zip code, and if you scroll along the bottom, you'll see the phone numbers, which have been changed. Notice that if you click on a column heading, it will sort it by alphabetical order. Let's do one more sample program together. So we'll start the program and save it under CustRep. And once again, to work in an external editor, we're going to list it to CustRep.brs. We'll drag in CustRep. And this sample program is found on the SageX website. You can go ahead and copy and paste it in. And let me demonstrate to you a couple more tools from Filio. Notice that when you copy and paste, you might have to clean it up a little bit so that there's no extra lines just by deleting the extra enters. The pound, auto number, pound comments that you see everywhere are part of another tool, Lexi. You can ignore them for now, but if you aren't using Lexi already, it can help you keep track of your line numbers. It adds the line numbers when you want to compile it. So basically it's pound, auto number, pound, and the first number is the starting line number, followed by a comma, and the increment you would like the line numbers to increase with each line. Alright, the first step towards using any FileIO tool in your program is to declare the library linkage to the FileIO library. You do this with the library statement, as you can see in line 40, then FileIO as the library name in quotation marks, followed by a colon, and the function you wish to use. In this case, it's fn open file. Then, for every data file you intend to read with the FileIO li library, you will need to declare two arrays in which to store the information. One string array, in this case, customer dollar. One numeric array, in this case, just customer. If you need to keep track of multiple records of information as simultaneously, you can declare additional sets of arrays to store them in. In this case, I also use the form dollar. Here we come to the meat of the FileIO library, the fn open function. This function will read your file layout, open the data file, and redimension your record pointer arrays to the correct size, and then define subscript values to help you reference the data from the file in your code. This is a fairly standard call to fn open. The one at the end tells FileIO that we're opening the file for input. This accomplishes several things, all of which you can read about in more detail in the FileIO documentation. The FileIO open function finds the first available file number and uses it to open the file, returning the file handle so you can use it to access the file. The FileIO library is designed to be as minimally invasive as possible. All the magic happens in the open statement. From then on, you read the data file the same way you always have, with a BR read statement. Since we're writing a report program, we also need to open the printer and print the report headings. When you read a data file in Filio, you read the file using the file access arrays we created earlier. Remember the customer dollar customer for non-numeric and numeric arrays. Filio also calculates the form statement for you and places it in the forms dollar array at the same position of the file number for the data file. 
If you look at the read loop, you will see that it reads every record in the data file looping until we hit the end of the file. For each record read, we print it out to the printer. Notice how we read the data one record at a time using the arrays, and we never specify individual variables in the read statement. Instead, we access the fields by name in the arrays using our named subscripts. Using Filio, you are free to change the file layouts for any of your files at any time. Because your programs always use the subscripts and the arrays to access the fields by name instead of by position, you can change your file layouts, adding new fields, inserting old fields, moving stuff around, and rearranging it to your heart's content. All your programs that use Filio will continue running like they always have. Since we open the file input only, we can close it the same way as we normally would. However, if you open a Filio data file for input-output access, it automatically opens all your key files for you. Therefore, it is necessary to close the file using the Filio FN close file routine. The last step is to copy the standard Filio FN open wrapper library into all your programs that will be using Filio. And these are the lines 99,000 to 99,910. So simply copy and paste the function from the bottom of the Filio library itself, and that's all there is to it. Using Filio saves future maintenance and development time while helping keep your code structured and readable. Filio also gives us a standard language we can use to create powerful tools that build off of if itself. Now let's run our program. As you can see, it printed out a lovely customer report for us with a customer name, city, zip code, and phone number. Thank you for joining us, and I hope that you will come back and watch the Screen.io library tutorial next.